it's a series of like ingredients for success. So it's hundred percent owned. It's on privately owned, patented ground, shallow flat line mineralization, excellent or to date positive metallurgy. Okay, a million ounces at, at a cutoff of 0.5. Well, hello, welcome to Assay TV. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Paul Matasek, who is the executive chairman of Freeman Gold. Freeman Gold are exploring in Idaho at their Lemmy project. And Paul, great to see you today. Um, I spoke with the, the CEO of Freeman Gold, uh, Will Randall, a little bit, little over a year ago, I believe, when you were just sort of embarking on a quite an extensive drill program to, uh, to drill up some historic uh, drilling uh, at, the, uh, at the Lemmy project there in Idaho. Fast forward one year, and you've got yourself an NI43101 uh, compliant gold resource there. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the, the sort of the history of the project and the process that you've gone through to, to get to this stage. Absolutely, and thanks for inviting me onto your show. Uh, I'm speaking from Whistler, Canada today and uh, enjoying a snow felt day and seems like a great thing to do. So uh, the Lemmy Project in Freeman, well, it's in Northeast Idaho in Lemmy County, so that's why it's the Lemmy Project. Uh, the company's called Freeman because one of the peaks you see in the nearby area is called Freeman Peak, and it's a, a towering 10,000 uh, foot hole peak that you can walk up to. And the Freeman Gold Project, the Lemmy Gold Project, historically started uh, in a plaster mine area in the late 1890s and 1910s. And nothing really much happened until the 1980s when FMC actually discovered the, uh, the deposit. And between FMC and it's a company called AGR, which became Meridian. They drilled a number of holes in the 80s and 90s. And then AGR, Meridian, was mining the Bear Track uh, gold mine. And we're preparing to, uh, to mine the Lemmy, uh, the oxide portion, once the Bear Track had been mined out, uh, when kind of Briex happened. Okay. And, and so they kind of lost interest. It was a collapse in the gold market. And, uh, and an Idaho man, businessman, picked it up uh, and bought it. And, uh, and then he convinced uh, Northern Vertex uh, to buy 51% of it. And they drilled uh, the, uh, in 2012 a series of holes that were quite prospective. But you know, Northern Vertex were more interested in, in developing their Moss mine. And so they sold it back to uh, the... Uh, back to the businessman and so and then nothing really happened so we had this deposit that had some high grade intersections in idaho which is uh, um, a jurisdiction that's you know well very attractive on the fraser institute it's a it's a, a survey done every year on the mining attractiveness it's like number three in the world and and number one for policy attractiveness um and so in 2019, Freeman, otherwise known before, it's called Lodge Resources. They made a purchase of, of this deposit, real estate deposit, real estate uh, asset deal. And, um, and fr from that point on, the reason why it's so important is that because it's a real estate deal, it was buying a lot of patented ground, okay, which is privately owned. And so most of all the drilling was done on private ground. OK, so and that has a lot of good implications for getting permits uh, rapidly and quickly. So in 2020, as we as you just alluded to prior, uh, Freeman embarked on a comprehensive exploration program, which consisted of soil sampling, ground geophysics, IP magnetics. Uh, they did a lot of staking uh, around their area, and they did 7,000 meters of drilling, mostly infill drilling, to try to see if they can build a resource from all the historic drilling that was done to date. Okay, And so as a result of that drilling, they found close to a million ounces of I&I, &I, 750,000 ounces of 1.0 grams per ton gold, if indicated, and about 250,000 uh, ounces of 1.01 .01 grams per ton gold as inferred, okay? 
And what was most interesting, and they made the, they made the release of that information in uh, July of this year, okay? And uh, some of the holes they hit were like 189 meters of 1.1 gram, which contained 92 meters of 1.4 and 4.3 meters of, 1 of 15 grams. So almost half an ounce. Another hole they had 48 meters of 1.4 grams and 4.6 meters of four grams per ton. So a lot of, lot of high grade intervals, okay? But what's most important that these were oxide and they were all shallow. They almost started all from surface. So, you know, when we did some metallurgical results in this year too, they, uh, they found that through a called bottle roll, bottle roll uh, analysis, that they were getting close to 95% recoveries. So here you have a shallow deposit and a good jurisdiction, okay, with a, a million ounce deposit, okay? So, you know, that's where we were today. And, you know, what, what we need to do is a million ounces is just on the cusp of, you know, of people being interested in, you know, and maybe developing it or purchasing it. And so what we, what we embark on doing now is trying to look at depth because we never drilled any depots, look along strike east and west of, of the zones. And as part of that, large exploration um, program we conducted in 2020, we found 11 high priority targets, one of them being the beauty zone, okay? And, and, we're, and we'll go into that in a little bit more detail, but that's one that we'd like to, is a, a high priority target. And it's just about 600 meters to the west of, of uh, the Lemai deposit. So it's close enough that we could truck or to, or to access or any kind of infrastructure. So, that kind of gives you a summary of where we are. And in, in, in my business, time is money. And so how we can you know, fast track all of that is by financing or doing, instead of getting one drill, get two drills or get three drills. And so hence we just announced uh, about a week ago, a $10 million financing. And uh, because of the demand, it's almost fourfold worth of demand. We've increased it to 13 million US. So, so exciting times for Freeman. And, uh, you know, I'm very looking forward to the drill program. Absolutely. And, and in, in September, I mean, you moved from being on the sort of strategic advisory board to taking a more hands on role uh, as executive chairman. I, you know, apart from what you've said already, I mean, what, what yeah. is it about Freeman Gold that, that, that made you make that sort of more hands on leap? Well, so it's a series of like ingredients for success. So it's 100% owned. It's on privately owned, patented ground, shallow, flat line mineralization, excellent or to date positive metallurgy. Okay, a million ounces at, at a cutoff of 0.5. Okay, uh, so those are all, the, and then not tested. Okay, so in a great jurisdiction. So. You know, I went from a strategic advisor seeing, and after, I, I did it after all that data was available. And I said, now's the time to invest in the company and to take the next step. Absolutely. And this isn't your first rodeo, uh, so to speak. I mean, you and your team have an impressive track record with, I think, it's, was it six um, companies you've, you've, you've been in and then exited um, to the tune of um, something like $2.5 billion, I think, in sale value over the years. Um, and... Freeman Gold, how does that sort of sit, um, you know, compared with some of your previous um, uh, enterprises? And, you know, um, what, what is your typical approach to sort of, you know, acquiring, developing, and then, and then selling projects? So you want to know the secret sauce. Is that, yes. that's, what, that's what it comes down to. And so, yeah, I did. I sold six companies, and one was a uranium company, one was a potash company, two lithium companies, and two gold companies. And uh, so... Kind of like the secret of that success is probably understanding the, uh, the cycle of the commodity price. Okay. So for instance, energy metals that went, uh, was a uranium player uh, in 2004 to 2007. Uh, uranium was $10 when I started and I sold it at $110. Okay. Of course, the next year it went down back to $35 to 25. Okay. So timing, speed. 
okay? Potash, when I started um, the legacy project in Potash One, Potash was about $100. Uh, it went up to $1,100. I sold the company at 900 to, uh, for all cash to uh, K plus S. And uh, now Potash is trading around 250 uh, as, as so again, and that was done in three years. In uh, gold, okay, both of the, uh, uh, oh, I can give you lithium. Lithium, I sold lithium one to Galaxy, which is now, which is bought by Oracobre, okay, uh, and Ombres Omerto. And uh, it was, they were trading around $3,000 when I started. Lithium I was part of one of the early people that saw lithium as the, the future um, energy source. And uh, it went up to, in my time, it went up to like $11,000. And now it's reaching $20,000, eh? But I subsequently sold another lithium company that caught part of that, that train. So, so cycle of the commodity, okay? Uh, also selecting an asset that you think has legs to it, okay? And as I previously said, jurisdiction, you know, all the things that you need for, uh, and I mostly sell things, okay? And I can tell you why, why I sell things, but that's a different uh, answer, is that, you know, of the six deposits, I mean, usually a single, in fact, all my companies have been single asset companies. Three of them are in production today. Well, Palangan, the uranium one, Legacy Mine. I think it's the largest uh, mine ever built in Canada. It was $5 billion, okay? Done by K plus S, okay? And Lindero, uh, Argentine heat bleach gold deposit, okay? So those in production. And three of them are going to go into production. So Toroparu, which is the, the, which is the uh, uh, project I just sold to uh, Grand Columbian Mines, they're, they're planning to put that in production and they're, they're working on a feasibility study right now. Uh, Salar de Los Angeles, which sold to a Chinese group, uh, I was about three years ago. Uh, they actually have a Salar, they're already in, in, in pre-production. Uh, and Ombre de Murto, uh, which was sold, uh, half of it was sold to POSCO, and they put they are now in pre-production. So having the right, and I think uh, Lemi has the right size or could have the right size to actually be a good fit for a mid-tier, okay? Or, or amalgamation with a number of other companies that might be interested in adding to their portfolio. And, and so sometimes people ask me, why do you sell companies? Why don't you just put them in production? And the reason why is that junior mining companies face the awful prospect of trying to raise money um, at, at horrendous prices, interest rates. So whereas uh, First Quantum Minerals, a company I work for, can raise money at one or 2%, if I try to do it in LEMI or any of the company side, I'd be paying 17, 18%, okay? And it just doesn't, that 18, 19%, I'd rather take the share value in selling it than trying to build it. And as you know, there's two or three years where while well, you build this asset where nothing much happens. And so you, you're, you, know, you have people that get pummeled in that process. So, so um, that's the reason why I, I tend to sell and, and it's, uh, it seems to make more, more sense to me. And I try to give that value to, back to the shareholders. And then the team, I, I try to hire the best people, uh, experts in all the fields. So when I did uh, the potash, I hired the two best potash pro uh, process engineers in the world. When I did uranium, I hired ex-uranium guys when no one was even interested in uranium. And, you know, and, and work with people that have been successful. So I work with Will Randall, who's, uh, I, I worked with him with Lithium X and Arena, excellent geologist, go-getter, okay, and helps execute his programs. Bassam Mubarak, I've been involved with him, he's my CFO. He's been involved with Gold Rock, Lithium X, my Gold X. Uh, he's an excellent negotiator and executor in terms of finance and regulatory. So, so those are the keys. And then timing, okay? I like to work in a window of two to three years to, to make a plan. And so that, you know, frankly, I get bored if I spend more than three years working on one thing and having to imagine to say the same PowerPoint or presentation after three years. It just about kills me. So I, I am 
And, uh, and the other thing I'm committed, I, I tend to, in all my deals, I buy stock and I don't sell them until, I, uh, until I've either sold this company. So you can check all my, my insider trades and see that. So that's why I think Lemmy has that opportunity to, to provide you know, a 2 million ounce type of deposit, which I think people are looking for in the United States. And because it's patented, you can fast track. You can actually develop a lot of things on private ground that you can't do more on forestry lands or public lands. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So the next step for the company, I mean, you've, you've you know, taken a year to get to this sort of million uh, ounce resource. You, 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 you mentioned earlier, you're doing the expansion drilling. What should people yeah. be looking out for in the next few sort of months? So phase two uh, uh, drilling is going to start probably tomorrow. We have a drill on site. Uh, it's about a 4,000 meter program right now. That was before we announced the financing. And we've got three or four holes in the beauty zone, uh, probably four to 500 meters there. We're gonna test, make some uh, deeper holes to see if we have any continuity at depth. We've been to like you know, 200 meters and we're still in oxide zone. So there's a lot of potential below that. We've had some holes and the mineralization. Uh, so we can test that and that's probably four to 800 meters, 3,200 meters. We'll go and just tank doing step outs, uh, on the East and West extensions and seeing where those go. Uh, so like for instance, the beauty zone, they did a uh, prospecting, they did soil and, and rock sampling last summer. And, you know, so they found a large soil anomaly, but within that soil anomaly, they did, they took 52 rock samples. Uh, over the area. And uh, this beauty zone is, I say, 600 meters to the east. Uh, 52 out of uh, 105 rock samples that we collected were over a gram. And 28 of them were over 10 grams. One of them was 15 ounces per ton. Hmm. So, uh, so we think uh, that that's a high priority target that we're going to use. And, and we've, as I said, we've just announced uh, financing a week ago, we've upsized it to 13 million. Uh, we've got great shareholders on the registry, uh, and we're going to use that money to fast track. Okay, to go with my three-year rule, so that uh, so that we can get results. Everybody wants to move quick. Absolutely. Well, you excited to get the drill the drill bits turning in that uh, in those new zones, um, and yep. look forward to getting some drill results coming out over the next uh, you know few months. Yeah. Um, the, the, the only issues that we have today, my friend, is, is uh, analytical labs. It's, it, it is horrendously slow. What, what is the time? What is the sort of uh, time? Oh, we're, uh, it's probably three months. Three months from we, when we submit a sample. We crush it up and send it. It's, 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 uh, it's probably the rate determining step now. Of, you know, it's not financing. It's not drilling. It's getting a, getting a number to deal with. Just getting results back from the assay lab. Well, I guess people yeah. have to be patient these days, don't they? How, how are Progress. investors, you know, reacting? Are they are they are they being patient? Yeah, no, we've uh, we've been on an upswing since September, since uh, I, I made the announcement that I've come on board. Uh, I think that re-energized the team. Uh, I think you know the story's not been not been well told and not been advertised. Uh, as I said, for many, many years, it was stuck in a private company. And, and it's, you know, you can drive to it. It's in Idaho. You know, it's got so many good, good uh, aspects of it that, uh, you know, I think it's people need to know. And so I think that's one of my jobs and Will's jobs and Bassam's job. Absolutely. Well, exciting times ahead for the company. And, uh, you know, great, I guess, for the company to have you on board and in, in your new sort of hands-on role as executive chairman driving, driving things forward. Uh, but thank you very much for joining us today, uh, giving us that update on Freeman Gold. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul.